Well, look, it's it's a genuine pleasure and an honour to be joined on the show ahead of his new documentary being released uh, tomorrow as it is as we're having this conversation. Bye Bye Barry on Amazon Prime Video this Tuesday, the 21st of November, just in time for the Lions' traditional Thanksgiving game, which of course is live on TalkSport 2 this Thursday evening against the Green Bay Packers, one of the very best to ever do it. Barry Sanders joins the show now. Barry, how are you doing this fine afternoon, sir? I'm doing great. Great to be here and great to see you. Uh, look, a very simple question to ask first. I'm sure you've been asked so much about your retirement over the years. So so why now to tell this story? Why now? I think for me, the timing was just right. You know, um, 20 years ago, I wrote a book. Uh, a lot has happened since then. Um, you know, and really, I think all the stars uh, were just more aligned uh, to be able to to uh, do a documentary um, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, far enough removed where I felt comfortable enough just diving into it. And, and, um, and of course, uh, prime video NFL network, um, you know, they got behind it and, and, uh, really wanted to tell my story, really wanted to really partner with me, um, to tell my story. Um, you know, and, and so, um, and so that's why, um, you know, it, it happened now. Is it the most regular question you've been asked over the last 25 or so years? Do people still want to know the story when they speak to you, see you at Radio Row, wherever it might be every year? Uh, it, it comes up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the question, the question comes up, um, you know, if we're, you know, for those fans that are old enough to have, have seen me play. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I do. I get a lot of different questions, but certainly that one is one of the more popular ones. It's fascinating for me. I, I was just beginning to to kind of latch on to the NFL as a teenager for your 97 season into 98. And so I remember the kind of end of your career. And I thought it was fascinating to me, obviously, being a Londoner, is how much of an affinity you seem to have with our city. It's where you went on the day of your retirement. It's where you went to tell this story as well. So why London? Why the affinity with this city? I mean, what what better place to, to, uh, to come than... <laughs> Than London, you know, one one of the best cities on, on the planet. Um, but um, it's funny because you know I had played a I had played a preseason uh, preseason game in London, um, and had just traveled through London um, just on on off season travel. So it was a place that I was just, you know somewhat familiar with. Um, you know, I always enjoyed it. Um, you know, and and uh, for me it was it, in my mind as a you know 30, 31 year old. Um, you know, it was a perfect getaway uh, to, you know, spend a few days, a few weeks um, at that time. And and um, and really, it's funny because uh, when we were when we were doing this project, um, you know, NFL Network uh, Prime Video, you know, they were they were insistent on coming back to London. I, I was thinking I was just going to tell them about my trip to London. And they were like, no, 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 we want to we want to go to. <laughs> we want to go back to London and spend some days. And so my, my sons really, really enjoyed that because all four of them were able to make the trip and we were able to spend a few days there uh, shooting. And and so it really worked out well. And look, you said it's, you now feel kind of comfortable. The timing felt right. How much was the, being able to bring your boys and actually as much as we see the story of the documentary, I don't want to give too much away. It's really you telling the story to your boys and we're kind of the, the fly on the wall of that conversation almost. Exactly. Yes. Um, you know, because, you know, my, my boys are, are um, ages range from like 16 to 30, um, you know, and so, um, you know, the younger ones, they weren't they weren't uh, around then. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of uh, narrating to them, you know, kind of um, retracing my steps to those days when I retired and, and what I was thinking, um, you know, and, and, you know, sort of the the why of a lot of questions, uh, why I was doing this, why I was doing that, um, you know, so, uh, so they really are sort of really a part of it. Um, part of kind of asking me a lot of those questions that I would receive from a lot of fans over the years. Um, so I'm just kind of explaining to them, um, you know, what I was thinking and what I was going through at that time. 
and look for people if maybe they're not NFL fans or they're intrigued by this as a prospect. It's the relationships that make this film for me. It's your relationship with your father, your relationship with your boys. I did have to ask, though, the 2000 yard ball. I mean, great to see that moment. Great to see that story told. Do you ever know what happened to the ball? Do you ever know where it is now? Because we see what happens with the shoes, of course. But uh, again, I won't give that one away. But whatever happened to the ball? Um, honestly, I have no idea. <laughs> Yeah, you don't seem like no a idea. sentimental man for things like that, Barry, I have to say. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, obviously, you know, I mean, it would be, it would be great to have the ball, but you know, I, I have the moments, you know, that hey, the video's there. You can't you can't take the video with, away from me, right? I mean, you know, so but um but at, at that moment um and you know, I just uh, you know, yeah, I, I did seem to lose track of, of a few very important um pieces of, of history as far as that. You're you're exactly right. <laughs> it, it, it strikes me because I don't know if you saw this story in recent days, but you know Emmett Smith, who features heavily in this documentary, obviously someone who you had a healthy rivalry rivalry with in your career. He had a fantastic moment recently where they showed a video of during his game where he broke the record. He wore a different jersey in every quarter, so he could give one to his foundation, so he could give one to the Hall of Fame, so he could keep one for himself. And I think they auctioned one off possibly as well. And so it just it really struck me the difference between how kind of how much they paid attention to that and how you were just a bit like, oh, yeah, I don't know who has the shoes. I don't know who has the ball at this point. <laughs> no, yeah, it's funny because I, I know just from um, just from being around him and knowing him, no, yeah, he kept track of everything. Um, you know, all the balls, his touchdown balls, um, you know, the balls that he scored touchdowns with and and memorabilia. And, so, you know, some guys, I, I feel like in, in the late 90s, um, you know, it, it was just one of those things where, for, for me, at least for me anyways, I didn't necessarily always have a great grasp on, you know, just what that might mean down the road. Um, I was just kind of locked into that moment, you know, and, and I think some guys are just better, certainly Emmett, at understanding, okay, yeah, this this will be precious one day, um, you know, and, and so he was, he was very good at doing that. For you coming to revisit this story, was there anything that you did find tough to go back to? Was there anything that you did, like any memories you had to recall that you did maybe struggle with, even though you'd, you'd made the decision to come back and tell the story now? Well, it's it's certainly, um, for me, just a lot of the, 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 you know, the parts where my dad is in it. Um, that was, you know, when I first, when I retired, that was a kind of a tough it time for me and my dad because, he thought I was out of my mind, you know, for retiring, um, you know, and he was all my, always my biggest fan, uh, you know, a big part of why I played the game, but, you know, certainly a very strong opinionated uh, person, um, you know, and, and um, he couldn't believe that I was retiring. And, and so, um, and so it was, it was tough enough. It was tough enough to retire, but then, you know, to have, have your dad threatening you for retiring, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, made it even tougher. Um, and so, and so that, that definitely put a strain at that time on the relationship. Um, you know, so that part of it was, was kind of tough. And I definitely had to fight back a few tears, just seeing, you know, a lot of the, the footage of him, you know, he's been gone since 2011. Um, you know, and he was such a big part of just my life and all, you know, all of, uh, everyone in my family, um, and brothers and sisters, all of our, you know, success and all of our life, um, you know, so, so yeah, that, that part was probably was was probably the toughest part. You're also someone who, and it makes this clear in the in the documentary. You know, you're not someone who necessarily gravitated towards the limelight. You didn't play football for fame. You didn't play it for records. You know, there was the great story from your draft day where you essentially went missing for a few hours when you're meant to be doing an interview and and all that stuff as well. So actually, how do you find kind of doing the documentary, doing the media stuff now, considering you're quite a private man at that part at that sort of time? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think it, it's a way, um, I guess, for me to just sort of tell my story um, in a way that, um, you know, that I could at least be a part of it um, and have the most control and, the, you know, be the most comfortable with. Um, and uh, and so um, and so in that in that sense, and, you know, I think that's why, you know, I think that's why um, I was probably the most comfortable with this sort of format. Um, you know, I mean, I don't. I wouldn't say that I, I don't, I wouldn't say that I um, ran away from the media, but I certainly wasn't, uh, you know, I certainly wasn't chasing attention. 
Um, you know, and I love, you know, and for me, that's something I had to sort of understand and learn about um, the game. And, and, um, and really, and really, if you think about it, you know, the media has grown so much. Um, even I feel like in a lot of ways, I grew up with a lot of those media outlets, that outlets, because growing up, for me, it, you know, the media wasn't that much a part of the game the way it is today. Um, and so, and so certain players are more prepared for that thing, that part of it than others. And that's certainly something that I had to kind of, kind of learn over time. Uh, the kind of last one on the film, and I do want to ask you a bit about kind of the, the current state of the Lions. So exciting right now where they are, but so many great names in this, all the brilliant football names that were so great to hear from, but then guys like Jeff Daniels, Eminem turning up, who for you were like the people that you got involved in the film who you were maybe surprised did it or excited to see or maybe surprised by something they said when when they did their filming? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, you know, just seeing um, seeing all the guys that contributed. But you like you mentioned, um, you mentioned Jeff Daniels, um, Eminem, um, you know, other Detroit icons you know, who, who sort of, you know, loan their voice, um, you know, in their time, you know, uh, Tim Allen, uh, you know, guys like that. Uh, I, you know, you know, these guys are from Detroit um, and that they're Lions fans, but you don't, you don't always get a chance to hear, okay, you know, how much were they paying attention? Um, you know, what, what did the Lions actually mean to them? But these guys are hardcore Lions fans and, and um, they follow it. And so, so for me, yeah, it was it was impressive to see uh, get a contribution from those guys, and how important you were to them as well. I think was was wonderful to see. I think Eminem maybe took which is really cool. Us. Yes, is, sure. isn't it? Just yeah, it's not it's not a bad list of people to have kind of come out and and pay tribute to how important you were uh, to their life. Uh, I, I said it. I I want to ask about the current state of the Lions, eight and two for the first time since since I think it was nineteen sixty two after the come from behind win last night. Uh, yeah, uh, this is still a team who haven't won a playoff game since you were with them in your early part of your career. So what do you make of this team right now? And and do you think they have a chance to go on and do something special this year? Oh, yeah, they absolutely have a chance to go on and do something special. I mean, you see the way they, they pulled that game out yesterday um, to be able to overcome, you know, those turnovers um, and um, come back and get a win. I just think you know, team, the team of the past and recent years, I don't, I don't know if they win that game, um, you know, to be where they are now sitting at the top of the division um, with a, a nice little, little cushion between them and the second place team. I mean, you almost, you can almost guarantee that they're going to have a playoff game um, just a matter of whether it's a home or away or what, whatnot. But, but um, I think they've really just met with, all the Lions fans expectations about what this team could be, you know, coach Campbell de deserves a ton of credit uh, for putting together this roster. Um, the guys are playing up to expectation, um, you know, and, and we're sitting right now exactly where we want it to be this time of the year. Um, you know, you got Thanksgiving game coming up. Um, yeah, that's always a big game. I mean, so, so yeah, Lions fans are excited. We've been waiting for this sort of a, a team for many, many years now. We, we've seen it building the last few seasons. Um, you know, but this is exactly what we hope for. Do, do you think that culture change comes from Dan Campbell? I saw you speaking elsewhere saying that you'd visited with him a couple of times this year, had the chance to spend some time with him. So what have you made of him and what he's done for this organization? Oh, absolutely. I think it com comes from Coach Campbell. Um, I think that he's he's very serious about the business of, of football and about, you know, his, his team um, come hell or high water coming out and, and giving their best effort, um, you know, and we saw that in previous seasons, even even when things didn't look good for them, um, that they always played hard. Um, now you got um, you got a, a a great roster with great chemistry, um, a lot of talent all over the field, guys contributing, um, you know, just great complimentary football, um, and so that absolutely comes from from Coach Campbell, and he he deserves all the credit. Lovely to see the city of Detroit getting a team that, you know, maybe you felt they deserved all those years ago. And the, the last one I want to ask, there was so much focus on in this film and on you on, on retiring after 10 years in the league, but 
the running back position right now, you know, if guys get to a second contract, a third contract, it's almost a, a kind of surprise at this point, the way that the position is now valued. What what do you make of the current state of, of running back in the NFL? And actually, does the NFL maybe need to do more to protect these guys who, you know, it's one of the most violent, shortest careers you can have, and yet they're one of the most exciting players and we love them so much. So should we be doing more to make sure the running back is elevated to the level it was maybe in your days? Well, I mean, I think um, it's certainly interesting to, to watch just how the game has evolved. Um, it's in a lot of ways, it's um, it's played different. Um, it, the game um, is certainly more passing oriented game, but you have to you at the same time. I still think there's a lot of guys from the running back position that still impact the game. Um, you look at um, you look at the season as an example. Chris McCaffrey's having. Um, you look at, you know, what, what Derrick Henry has meant um, in recent years, um, you know, and or a guy like Saquon Barkley or whoever, whoever you know, whoever, take your pick. <coughs> Excuse me. Hey, even look at even look at the Lions. Look at look at how balanced they are. Um, that 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 last drive of the game yesterday. I don't know. They I think they ran the ball uh, more than they passed the ball um, in the last two plays. um um, down by the goal line, and certainly the touchdown was running plays. I mean, um, I still think you can impact the game from the running position. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I would, I used to always say, you know, when Brady was playing, um, and, and we were having this conversation that, you know, every team doesn't have a Tom Brady or, um, or Peyton Manning. You know, most of these teams t do still need a running game. I still, I, I do still think that that is the case, um, you know, that uh, that you still see great play from that position. But um, but it'll it'll be interesting to see kind of how it evolves going forward. Um, but I'm I'm still convinced that that uh, in most cases you're going to need to have good balance. And, and certainly that involves a good running game. Uh, Lewis Sanders, it was such a pleasure, a genuine honour to, to spend the time with you today. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed the film and, and I implore everyone to go out and check it out. As I said, we've got live coverage of the Lions coming up this Thursday night. Um, thank you so much for your time. And hey, look, if you're out in Vegas for the Super Bowl this year, out on Radio Row, we'll, we'll come and say hello in person and, and bring a little flavour of London to, to, to Vegas as well. No, I look forward to it, man. Thanks for having me. Let, let's do it again sometime. Brilliant stuff. Thank you so much, Barry. Really appreciate it, sir. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.